Hello, my name is Rahasia Poe, and um, Dara and I are here today to interview Sheldon Nidal for the Face to Face with Lotus Guide magazine. And I'd like to introduce you now to Sheldon Nidal. <coughs> Hello, I'm Sheldon Nidal, and I hope we have a great interview. I think we will. I think we will too, Sheldon. So I'd like to start this out with, <coughs> you speak about the dark ones. And I think this is something that um, most people think about, the dark energy, and a lot of people don't like to look at it. But who are the dark ones, and, and what is it that makes them dark? <clears throat> when I was a kid, what they mainly talked about with people who were dark is they are into themselves. So the light doesn't penetrate. By light not penetrating, what is simply men are two things. One, they avoid anything that will allow them to get beyond what they believe, what they see, what they feel. They feel that that is the total amount of what they want. And they also have a goal, which is usually oriented toward themselves. It's usually based upon some kind of a series of hierarchical concepts, where they're usually at the top, and the rest of the process of how they operate is they want to maintain that, and they're basically closed up. So they don't want the light to come in. So the dark simply means absence of light. So they work on a series of concepts of beliefs and they use that to create those things that they believe are in their own best interest. So they are working, as I said then, toward self-interest and they're working very, very much toward creating the world that they want. In other words, they take their reality and they work very hard to manifest it and to maintain it. Sounds like an eerie description of a politician. <laughs> well, they are the ultimate politicians. <laughs> Their whole concept of reality is to create a reality that they want and to make everyone else believe that the reality that they want is the reality that you want. Okay, how, how does this um, connect with the cabal? <laughs> well, let's begin with how they got here and why they are here and why they are continuing to do what they're doing, so to speak. They came here because in the beginning there was another group. Let's start out at the beginning of history, go back a little further than that. There's a fall of Atlantis, it's roughly about 13 millennia ago. After that, there was an opening because we had been reduced from being fully conscious beings to being limited conscious beings. Now let's take those terms and break them down. Fully conscious being means that you have a complete interaction between the world of spirit and the world of the physical. When you become limited conscious beings, the world of spirit leaves you. You create so-called veil that we talk about, and you become a limited conscious being. You are living in the reality is, this is it. The physical aspects of reality is it. That's for the only real reality to them is the physical. Now. When that fall happened, one of the first things that then became obvious had to be done was one, the people had to be told what happened to them and how to get back, or two, they could be manipulated. <clears throat> Heaven decided that the process that was best for us at that time was to be manipulated and learn about how the dark manipulates us so we could take that wisdom when we became fully conscious again, when we put all the stuff that we have within us, our full potential selves, back together again, we would then understand what it was like to not have all that reality that we have, which is the reality of combining heaven and physical together, and just had for a long time just physical with the other, with the other thing, the heaven or the spiritual aspect being something that we do not fully comprehend and so we can be manipulated because we don't know we don't know what happens after death we don't know why we die we don't know if there's a real spiritual reality we don't fully understand anything except to say there has to be a spiritual aspect and there has to be a physical aspect and somehow the spiritual aspect <laughs> transcends the physical aspect but we don't know why we can come up with all concepts and realities and hypothesis and whatever but deep down we don't know why. So this group came along, which is the Anunnaki, which simply in Sumerian means the sons of heaven or the children or the people of heaven, of the sky, and they were allowed to take the processes of what they knew and manipulate these limited conscious beings. 
And they did that from the present to roughly a little over a decade and a half ago. So what we now have on this world for a long, long time was a group that the Anunnaki needed to act as the people between who they were and who we were. And these became the rulers or the people that were allowed to use their knowledge to manipulate us. And this group is called by many, many names. Uh, it's called the Illuminati, the Illuminoids, the uh, power that be, etc., etc., etc. So this is the group that we're talking about as the Cabal. Cabal simply means a group or a clique of people working together for a specific purpose. That's what they are doing. What the purpose they're working for is initially they were following the orders of the Anunnaki, this overlord group, this sky gods, and their aspect was to manipulate us. So they began to use what we were being told, this is the Illuminati, the dark cabal as I like to call it today, this group was manipulating <clears throat> completely how we were. They were telling us, this is why you believe why you believe, this is why it's good for you. To listening to us will give you benefits. You, you get things like, for instance, money and stuff like that that allows you to then expand what you can do, what you can't do. And so you then know that you can do more with it than without it. So money became very important. It became the key to power. It has had many different aspects. Another thing was there are always going to be people that were equivalent to, this, to these gods which are these Anunnaki, these sky gods, that would be directing you. And they were made themselves into being one part of who they were, so-called divine rule. So when this went away, they then used other ways to manipulate people because they knew the key to all of this was money, wealth, and power. These were the things that had been set up by the Anunnaki as the more important things in this society. That's because it's easier to manipulate people using those concepts. When you get rid of those concepts, then it becomes virtually impossible to rule people, to tell them what to do, or to deceive them, because they begin to see, they begin to feel, they begin to hear what they internally see as being right or wrong. And so, therefore, they need an overrider. So that's basically what the Dark Cabal has been doing for millennia. They've been setting us up and saying, well, this is the spiritual aspects you should believe in. These are the governmental aspects that can protect you and help you. If you do all of that, you can then work for us. You can get a job, you can get money, you can get more power, more aspects involved from that, and your life can be better for you and for your children. And so they began manipulating. <clears throat> and then they said, well, the way to really manipulate people and confuse them is war. To say that one group, whether it's a city-state or a nation or whatever, has certain things that are good or bad about it, and therefore it's we have to fight them. And the whole concept of fighting in a physical way to a fully conscious being is totally alien. There's nothing in your mind or your heart or et cetera that would say you need to do it. That's why when people go to war, even today, soldiers, they develop concepts that lead to various mental illnesses, lead to all kinds of physical disease, etc., because they're being put under stress to do something that they know deep down inside is not right. And so as you begin to see this in people, as you begin to watch people develop, one of the things that happens to people when they become more conscious, in other words, more aware of the relationship between the physical aspects of their reality and the spiritual aspects of their reality, they begin to see more and more and more that the way society is put together is wrong. And so they begin looking for some way, they begin what some people call truth searchers or just plain searchers, uh, philosophical searchers, whatever word phrase you like to use, they begin to say immediately one thing. There has to be something different than what I see around me. There has to be something better. And as you become more and more conscious, you begin to see that indeed, one, we're not alone. Two, there is some form of an advanced spiritual philosophy that deals with who and what we really are and see what people say we are in terms of physical beings and just being limited to that is wrong, that there has to be some kind of amalgam between the physical and the spiritual aspects of who and what we are. So you, you then begin searching around and, and, and looking for things. Now one of the things that they have allowed to leak out every so often over the millennia is a little bit of information. 
A lot of this information has been turned upside down and backwards because the Anunnaki do not want us to go beyond the initial concepts and really start to define one point after another and begin to put together what you might call a system of conceptualizing truthfully what this world is really about and that it really goes beyond the physical aspects. And so they have of course done a lot of stuff. You have a lot of myths. You have all kinds of books written in the modern world where literacy is more common. In the ancient days there would be sacred texts that some people would be able to write, read or write, scribes, who could interpret this to the people and they would get a little smattering in their minds of what is right or what is wrong, what is truly right or wrong. And so this has always been there, but they've always kept it at the periphery because they don't want people to really grab it, but there's enough of it there that they can use that peripheral information to strengthen their concepts about what they believe and their manipulations of what is the true spiritual aspects is that combine with our physical aspects to recreate within us a real concept of reality. So what we then have going on is that for a long time we had the Anunnaki at the top, we had the minions, what I like to call today the Dark Cabal, and they had us, which had different degrees of belief systems, different degrees of education, different degrees of understanding the world and its physical aspects and attempting to look beyond it. So we didn't really know if what we believed in was correct or not. A lot of people believed it so deeply, whatever they came up with, that they that whole different belief systems around our planet have been created. Many great leaders came from beyond, from spirit, to try to give human beings a better idea of the concepts of what is really the truth out there and go beyond the manipulations of the of the minions, the dark cabal, and their leaders, the Anunnaki. Now, it all changed recently. In the mid-90s, so once again I'm going to have to go backwards here and explain. In our galaxy there's a light aspect and there's a dark aspect. The dark aspect what I like to call the Lords of the Dark are a collective. And this collective is can be basically called Inchara, which is a a word that they came up with. By they I mean the the dark beings themselves, these Lords of Light. They call themselves the Anunnaki in the many different languages that where they created what are called the uh, the children of Anunnaki of, of Inchara. The the children of Inchara have for long periods of time been created without real light bodies and totally in a lockstep belief of exactly whatever it is that these dark lords created. So they created war across the galaxy, etc. So now Anchara had a, a pact with the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki and the, and the Ancharians, their various empires, were together. What happened was in 95, there was a before the dark lords came into this galaxy, they created with the, with the light a basic reality of when and where all of this was going to change. When actually you would have this amalgam where the light and the dark came together and created a greater light. So <clears throat> this has been going forward. This goes into millions of years, not just millennia. So as you look at the greater history, the galactic history, you see and Char coming into this solar system, you see that being interpreted through for Char, interpreted by the Anunnaki as far as planet Earth goes, and of course they needed their group, which were the various different minions, which became the various uh, ruling families, the various groups that were the most powerful beside the ruling families in any society, whether it was a city, state, or later a nation. So what happened was in 95, the light and the dark finally reached the point where they said it was time to end this dichotomy between